Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're back down at work again and um, today we're going to take the sump off and pull the pistons out of our Farmall F14. Uh, we've pulled a few more bits off uh, since last week when you saw it. I've pulled all the head studs out. Now this engine has wet sleeves in it. Um, so we've just put some washers and some bolts back in. This just holds the, the sleeves down tight while we're turning the engine around. Normally the head sitting on top holds the sleeves in place and stops them moving. Um, because we're going to be pushing around on the pistons and things like that, I want to make sure these don't move. If they move, it disturbs the O-ring seal in the bottom of them and you can end up with coolant leaking down into the sump. Uh, it gives you a similar, uh, similar issues to having a blown head gasket um, or similar symptoms to if you've got a blown head gasket. Uh, so we just put these on to hold the sleeves in place. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see if we can get the sump off now. Okay, so we've got the sump off. You can see the oil pick up here and the oil pump up here. This is the timing gears up here. Uh, three main bearings um, and these are the connecting rod bearings that go up to the pistons. Um, it all looks pretty good in here. It's all pretty dirty so it looks like it has never had enough oil changes. Um, but it doesn't look like we've had too much water in here over time. So we're going to knock these cotter pins out, undo these nuts and uh, start pulling the pistons out. Uh, we tap them out from underneath and we push them up, up to the top. Uh, so we're going to do that next. Okay, so we've just taken the two cotter pins out of here. Now we're going to loosen off the big end nuts. Hopefully this will just slide off. Um, now this actually has shells in it, not white metal bearings. So there's the shell, I'll just push that back in there. Now we're going to try and push the piston up and out the top. Now we want to be careful that we don't damage the crankshaft here while we're doing this. Because any marks in, on the crankshaft uh, cause more wear later on. We've got the piston pretty much up to the top there. Um, it's now just sitting on that little bit of a ridge. We're just going to turn the crankshaft a little bit to get it out of the way. We're going to use the back end of the hammer handle so that we don't damage anything up here and we're just going to give it a bit of a cut. Okay, so we've got the four pistons out here. Um, they all look pretty good. They all still have all of their rings. Uh, this one did have its oil ring too, but I um, accidentally broke that after I got it out. Um, so these ones have four compression rings and an oil ring down here. The oil ring works. There's holes around the skirt of the piston here and in the bottom of the groove. So the oil ring works by wiping down, wiping the oil down the cylinder and it, then the oil runs back through these holes and down the inside of the piston back into the sump. This bottom compression ring here also helps wiping the oil um, and it wipes it down into these holes here, but it is also a compression ring. <clears throat> um, the rings on these all look really good. For a tractor that I had thought was fairly worn out. Um, the rings look good and actually the big end bearings 
don't look too bad either. There's a little bit of scratching in here. Um, that's probably more from how long it's been sitting and then getting turned over after it was uh, after it'd been sitting for so long. Um, when these get worn, mostly it is it's the top one that has most of the load on it because when the piston is firing it's pushing down on the crankshaft this is basically just a retainer to make it go back up the other way when these get worn there's a copper layer under the white metal here um, and you start to be able to see copper through it when they are really worn um, so these all look look reasonable um, now it's very important when you're reassembling these that you get everything back together the right way round and in the right spot. So if you put one of these caps on back to front, because of the way they're bored, I'll exaggerate this a bit, but you end up with a slight step in your bearings and that will wear things very badly and your bearings will not last long at all. So each one of these is marked with a number. This is Conrod number four and cap number four for the fourth cylinder. Um, and the, the numbers face the camshaft, which is on this side of the engine. Now, interestingly, the pistons are not marked with a front. Often you'll find the pistons are marked with an arrow or something to tell you where the front is. <coughs> um, and they will also give you a size on them. Uh, like standard or plus plus 10 plus 20 oh, the big ends big end bearings in this are all still standard sized bearings so the crankshaft has not been ground yet um, and uh, I assume I haven't actually micro put a micrometer on the pistons yet but I'm assuming they are a standard piston too um, you wouldn't normally bore the cylinders to oversize just because they're a wet sleeve and it is easier to put a new piston and sleeve in than it is to bore the old sleeve to an oversize. Each piston, interestingly, is marked with a B and the number two. Um, I don't know what the B is. Some, uh, some engines, particularly the Rover 2000s of the 1970s, um, used to do a standard letter-sized piston. So you'd have a standard A, a standard B, a standard C, um, and I think a standard Z. Um, these were because when the bores were machined, they weren't always exactly right, so they'd fit a piston to the bore. And the letters were about one or two thou bigger than, than a standard, uh, than an absolutely standard piston was. So it just gave them a little bit of tolerance to fit the pistons. I'd be very surprised if on an agricultural engine like this, um, they, they did that as well, but they may have. Now, I'm, I'm really surprised that this engine isn't more worn. I had thought this tractor was quite worn out when it finished its life. Uh, however, I have seen pictures of this tractor in the, 19, in the early 60s, and it was in a pretty bad way then. It hadn't been used for a number of years. Um, and was in quite poor condition. Uh, so bearing in mind this is a 1938 or 39 tractor, it was probably uh, had less than 25 years of use in its working life. Um, I know they used this tractor for cutting and baling hay on the dairy. Um, I think most of the rest of its work was probably chasing cows around, um, rounding up cows and things like that. Uh, so it may not have done a lot of hard work. The other thing is that these originally had notoriously bad air cleaners on them. This is the air cleaner up the front here. Uh, and I believe that when these tractors were new, uh, they didn't have much of an air cleaner at all. Uh, and a lot of them started burning oil very badly in the first 18 months of their life. So, um, they came up with an upgraded air cleaner on them and a lot of them had to have a partial engine rebuild at that point just because they were burning so much oil. Uh, so this may have had a partial engine rebuild too at some point in the first five years of its life. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learnt a bit uh, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.